Welcome to the second episode of our video series on cattle farmer training, brought to you by the Karen Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aimed to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode on grazing outlines how important it is that your cattle have access to the best possible food sources so as to avoid disease. It is important to make sure that you have camps available that keep the herd in a safe, natural area and as far away as possible from humans and other cattle herds to prevent the spread of diseases like foot and mouth disease. Cattle should be able to roam freely in the camp without the stress of cars or unfamiliar humans. Thus, camps need to be made at least a few meters away from roads. This will also ensure the safety of the herd and innocent drivers in vehicles. Cattle are often subjected to eating plastic while they are grazing. Therefore, it needs to be considered when you plan a camp that the area is properly cleaned and cleared of glass, wire, or metal objects lying around that could possibly injure the cow. By ensuring that the chosen grazing area is clean, safe, and controlled, you can eliminate or prevent cattle losses. As importantly, there needs to be a source of clean water available. Depending on the grazing available, mature animals require 45 to 50 liters of water per day. The average ratio of water intake to what cattle eat is 1 to 2. If the water is contaminated or dirty, it will affect the animal's water consumption and its overall health. Remember, if no water is available, your cattle will not eat. When you have selected the area where you would like to make camps, you should think about the number of cattle you can graze in that area, the vegetation that is available, and the amount of rainfall that your chosen area receives per season. Consult with your local agricultural co-op for guidance on these figures. It would be of great benefit to the felt and cattle if you are able to implement rotational grazing. This is accomplished when you let a herd graze in one camp for two to three weeks while there are no animals in the other camp. And then after three weeks, you place the herd in the open camp that has had no grazing for the next two to three weeks. By doing this, we are ensuring that the grasses can grow again and not allowing the herd to eat the grasses to a point where they are unable to grow again. The natural grazing habits of cattle favor palatable grasses and leave the unpalatable grasses. If camps are not rested, the end result will be that only non-palatable grasses survive and your carrying capacity will drop drastically. Burning areas can be beneficial where there are a lot of shrubs and unwanted bush that the herd does not eat. By doing so, you are making place for good quality grasses to grow when the rainy season starts. Bush encroachment control is important to maintain carrying capacities. It is however critically important that when deciding to burn, you have chosen the right time of year and have the resources available to manage the fire to ensure that it does not get out of control and only burns in the area you are wanting to burn. Neighbors must also be informed when you are planning to burn. It is a good idea to form a community-based burn group and to communicate any planned burning to this group beforehand. Burning is a huge responsibility to the whole community and needs everyone's support. If not, 
You could isolate yourself as a farmer should things go wrong and bear the consequences of such action. Fire breaks and lines are typically burned in June and July once the grass is dry enough, but the winds have not yet picked up. You must check the weather and check in with your local fire warden on what the fire warnings are for the day to make sure it is safe to burn. It is illegal to burn on weekends. Block burning is done after the first 10 milliliters of rain in spring. This allows for early green grass of high quality to grow, enabling you to buy fewer leaks as a substitute. Felt must not be burnt every year and the various grass species must be managed differently to ensure you are not decreasing your palatable grasses. Note that you will need to manage the new grasses after the rain. The head cannot graze that area as soon as the first green shoots of grass show. You need to wait until the grass is at an acceptable length for its species. You can get a grass management guide from your Department of Agriculture. It is important to understand the concept of stocking rates. This is the number of hectares required for a large stock unit or animal unit based on an animal weighing 450 kilograms. On an extensive felt system, if you have only 100 hectares available, you cannot keep 200 head of cattle in that area. Carrying capacities are the minimum hectares you need per large stock unit. As a guide, 5 to 12 hectares is required per head of cattle over a year. The grazing capacity of the different provinces in South Africa changes systematically from the high rainfall areas to the low rainfall areas. Therefore, each grazing area has a different carrying capacity according to rainfall, grass species, topography, and environment. You should never stock heavier than your suggested carrying capacity as this can be detrimental to the sustainability of your grazing. One needs to consider the period of time they need for their animals in each camp and only stock according to grass availability. Supplementary feeding can be done, but it is costly and often not economically viable. It is therefore of critical importance that the number of cattle placed in a felt will not destroy the felt. If it is destroyed, the herd will starve due to overgrazing an area. This can be prevented by ensuring that the land available is sufficient for the size of your herd. This will lead to cattle grazing the area, gaining weight, and the grasses not being stressed. If the area is overgrazed by a large herd, you will notice a drop in body condition due to some animals not getting their daily feed requirements. Animals usually know instinctively to avoid poisonous plants, but if there is a shortage of food, poor grazing area, drought, or an area that is overstocked, starving animals will have no choice but to eat what is available. Furthermore, cattle who are newly introduced to the area are more in danger of eating poisonous plants. The risk of cattle eating dangerous plants increases in early spring as they grow before grasses begin to grow. It is important to note that animals that have died from plant poisoning should not be eaten. This can lead to severe sickness or even death. Some common poisonous plants in South Africa include cardiac glycosides like tulip and slankop, seniciosis, which is most widespread, Cestrum lavigatum or inkberry, Hefblar, Hosigde, and Lontana. There are 10 signs of possible poisoning in animals. Urinary signs indicate little to no urine production and swelling of the belly. There can also be a change in the color of the urine 
of visible signs of crystals. Never science where the animal is restless and sensitive to sound and touch, which in turn can manifest in difficulty walking, muscle tremors, blindness, or even paralysis. Hard science where animals may drop dead suddenly when being chased. Furthermore, animals tend to stand with their heads low and stomachs tucked in and can show signs of bloating and diarrhea. Weakness of the hind legs may also occur. Respiratory signs show that there is an increase in breathing rate and the animals grunt when breathing. Frothing at the mouth can also be noticed. Signs in teeth and bones display uneven, mottled, or black teeth and stiffness in animals where they shift weight from one leg to the other. Bone fractures can easily occur. Digestive signs are when animals stop eating and drinking. Common signs of dehydration include lethargy, tightening of the skin, weight loss and drying of mucous membranes and eyes. Reproductive signs include difficulty in giving birth, poor udder development, enlarged belly, low milk production, abortions, or deformed young. Males tend to not be interested in mating. Blood signs show pale, yellow, bluish, or brownish membranes, green-tinged feces, and listlessness. Urine has a red wine to coffee color. Skin signs are indicated by itchiness and reddening of the skin, scale or crust formation, rough coat, lumps and bumps on the skin, and hair loss. Liver signs include vomiting, yellow discoloration of membranes, and swelling of the belly and face. It is important that your cattle are kept to your general geographic area as they become accustomed to the ecosystem. Cattle are not very adaptable to moving to new areas that are far away. Know which poisonous plants occur in your area and remove them before you let the cattle graze there or do not let them graze in that area at all. Animals in good condition that have been supplemented with food and leeks during the winter months tend to not graze on poisonous plants. Do not feed animals moldy hay or hay cut from areas where poisonous plants occur. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.